So this is going to be take two of recording this. I had a new hard drive and for some reason things didn't quite pan out as I wanted. So this is Benko over here. As you saw, I just created a block by clicking on this and it creates a folder, a points to path and several nulls. These aren't standard nulls. These are a little bit of uh, a few tweaks behind the scenes that are going on um, and we'll cover those later on. So that's how you create a simple Benko block. You can also hold down shift and it will create an, a Benko block with a bounding box already set up for you. So if you click on one of these points to path, you can then just come up here and click on one of these and you've got a circle created. The advantage of having the points to path already established is if you wanted to add your own contents. So in this example, I want to add my own text. So then I can just come in here and put that position straight in there. So this guide here, this is just a regular cavalry guide. It doesn't do anything. So if I wanted to move these around and I just put my cursor over it and move, I'm going to have double transforms. That works for everything. What you have to do is hold down the S key and then you can select what you want and then you can move them around. So if you look at these main folders, their position always has to be zero, zero. Hit S and move. So when we create our Benko block, it adds a color field in here. So that way we can easily just color them however we want. Uh, the other option you can see here is that it has, is for the circle here. When that's created, you can just toggle between having it as a circle or an ellipse. So I'm just going to select these four here. And I'm going to put a constraint in, just a vertical constraint. And it's just going to iterate through and select the Benko nulls. And it's just going to fix them to the constraint. If we want to scale this Benko text, we can just click on the text and hit scale. This adds in a couple of maths nodes and a manipulator. So if we bring it in, it scales right down. If we wanted it to scale it bigger, we can just jump into this math split option here and change this to ceiling. So with all these setups, you've got the option just to jump in behind the scenes and you can just change whatever details you want to do. So I'll just create a couple more blocks now. When you create one, it actually creates the block with a bit of transparency. So you can see if there's overlap and things like that. So for this one, I'll just click on check a block. When you initially create them as well, you don't have to hit the S key. They're already selected for you, so you can just move them around. And for this one, I will click on an image. So to add an image, you just select your image shape here and then drag it on. You might want to jump into our image shader, increase that a little bit. And we're also just going to jump into Benko again and just set that scale. And I'll just create another constraint here and another one here. Make sure all the children of the Benko folder are locked. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. So now I can move this around. And as you can see here, that's not scaling how quite how I want it to. So I know it's Benko 4. And I'll just change this to max. So what you can do is just right click and say show, show and scene window and it will scroll to you. I've selected, I've set mine up so I have a shortcut so that I can easily jump between any folder. Makes life pretty easy. So what I was saying before as well, like, you know, you can just come in here. These are just the presets that I've just 
been working with for a wee while you can just do whatever you want and make whatever kind of changes if you wanted to you could start off with like the basic benko block you could um, build whatever kind of um, effect you wanted and then you could just save that so you could just export selected and then you can just like load and create a whole lot of different presets yourself this oh, there's also the option to add a path offset what that'll do is create a behavior which will be put to the top and then you can just offset that however you want just letting you know as well when you create these guides when you create these guides um, everything will snap to it you've also got the option here for a bevel So I've created a very simple little animation and I'm going to use this keys button to select all the keyframes that I've just created. Then I can just jump up into curves and I can click on one of these and we can see how it's, and it's applied all those curves for us. You don't have to use curves. You could use magic easing um, or some other curve tool that's available. But yeah, it's, being able to just select all those keyframes and apply one of these is um, is pretty great. So what I've done here is created a little batch and the location from this is being driven from that corner null. So if we have this open here, you can see it actually had the actually has the input here. And I haven't actually messed with the hierarchy of these nulls. So that's the uh, initial run through you know, of Benko and uh, how it works. It's that was like just a super simple example, but I just really want to see how things go. And uh, yeah, just thought I'd uh, put it out there and um, hopefully some of you find it useful and you can have a bit of fun with it and it opens up a few different avenues from uh, within cavalry. Cool. Thanks for everything. Cheers.